Hello, and welcome to Murray County Now. Murray County Now is a community news show covering the events, ideas, groups, and highlights happening in and around Murray County. First up is Columbia Arts in the Park. Arts in the Park is an artist showcase event going to be held at Murray County Park on October 20th. We spoke with Marion Haynes and Sonia Lynn Ryan for our segment, Creative Corner. I'm Marion Haynes, I'm director for Arts in the Park. Arts in the Park is a fine art and fine craft event with live music, demonstrations, um, food, um, and train rides will be available on these miniature or, or um, small scale locomotives. I was in the very early stages of brainstorming and putting an art show together when in walks Marion, Dr. Haynes, and she's a local artist and she was very interested in putting on a fine art show in Murray County Park. In the beginning I wanted to um, have a place, a venue to show my own work and then uh, the curator from the college who uh, from prior gallery had suggested that I cr create an event that and to keep it small but this event has amplified so fast um, and then I realized this wasn't about me at all this is about the whole community. What will be going on during Arts in the Park? Oh my goodness it's easier to say what would not be going on during Arts in the Park. We have train rides, we have food vendors and then the artists themselves it will be everything from vocal art, performing art, um, art on canvas with oils and acrylics, uh, we have art in glass, we have metals and stone, we have a potter. Um, metals and stone, did I mention jewelry? Let me just mention jewelry again. <laughs> and they'll all be there for people to enjoy and for people to purchase. Fine art and fine craft. Um, in this event, it is not highbrow, it is high quality. I hand selected all these artists. Um, that It was based on uh, artists who either earn their living through their art or high skilled craftsmen who honed their skills over many years like the uh, wood carvers, wood turners, uh, the furniture makers who use pre-industrial techniques. Arts in the Park sponsors are Parks Motor Sales, Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, United Waste Haulers, First Farmers and Merchants National Bank, Friends of Murray County Parks, Murray County Parks and Recreation, Caledonian Finance, Burger King of Murray County, CPWS, Mid-South Live Steamers, WKOM, McDonald's of Murray County, and The Prince Stop. GM will be supporting this event by bringing in Mickey Harris, one of the top airbrush artists in the United States, and painting the hood of a Chevrolet car live on site. Um, Mickey will be painting scenes of GM Spring Hill Manufacturing and the site's history. This is like watching Michelangelo paint live. This event's going to be great. Columbia Arts in the Park will be held in Murray County Park, rain or shine. Uh, the festival itself will be contained to the area just around the Kiwanis Shelter, which is near Kids Kingdom Playground. You could reach us at Columbia Park Arts at gmail.com or our Facebook page is uh, Columbia Arts in the Park. You could view all the art that's going to be at the event. You'll have to scroll down quite a bit because there's, there's quite a bit of work. I'm Dr. Brandy Grace uh, with Animal Medical Clinic and I'm here with Bailey um, and we're here to give the pet tip of the month. Um, so a lot of people ask us about fleas and ticks. Um, the best thing to do is to prevent them um, from getting on your pet and you can do that by applying um, different products uh, between their shoulder blades. Um, they have pills that you can give once monthly to the pets and uh, also pills that are kind of like their restart button. So uh, maybe once a, a day if you've got just an overload. Um, it's very important to treat your environment, so treat the house and treat the yard. Um, pet uh, fleas don't care if you've got a dirty house or a clean house, so it's really important to keep those off your pets. Um, they can prevent a variety of diseases, um, anywhere from anemia, uh, lameness, lethargy, um, tick-borne diseases can, you know, can cause uh, Lyme disease or Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Most people are aware of those. So it's very important to, to just keep that prevention on them once a month. Uh, even in the winter time, we're still seeing fleas you know, and ticks because of the, the mild winter. So um, just make sure to, to keep your pet protected and uh, apply or give a tablet once a month. Thank you so much. On September 28th and 29th, the 17th annual Southern Fried Festival was held in downtown Columbia. We caught up with Brenda Pierce the Executive Director of the Murray County Visitors and Conventions Bureau 
to discuss the festival and its impact on downtown Columbia in a segment called What's Happening. Uh, the Southern Fried Festival began as the Downtown Business and Professional Association's uh, Fall Festival. It was just uh, the regular Fall Festival that most communities have. Um, about that, that started about 1995. Um, about eight, nine years ago, uh, that association wanted to grow that festival. They decided they wanted to take it to another level. And to do that, uh, they needed a, a name, a theme, uh, a logo, something to build it around. And after a brainstorming session, it became the Southern Fried Festival. And uh, from there, it has just grown. Uh, it's a wonderful opportunity for local um, nonprofits uh, to do fundraisers. Um, uh, for example, uh, the Kiwanis Club last year joined us uh, to do the beverages. We uh, reserve the beverage rights and, and from the vendors uh, and allow the Kiwanis Club to sell uh, soft drinks and water. Uh, the Columbia Breakfast Rotary Club uh, mans the gates. Uh, for a portion of the, the gate. We estimate that probably this year there will be um, $17,000 to $20,000 that will go back into the community through uh, the community projects that these organizations will use those funds for. Uh, it draws a, a lot of people downtown. Uh, we estimate about 9,000 people uh, will be in Columbia, uh, downtown Columbia, uh, for the uh, Friday and Saturday of the event. So it exposes the downtown to a lot of people that may never have been downtown. Uh, it's a great opportunity for the merchants downtown. Even though um, someone might not come into their business during the festival, they may see the business and realize you know, that something's here they didn't know about and come back at another time. So it, it's a great um, uh, community event as well as exposing uh, the downtown to a lot of people. When you start an event, uh, it takes four or five years to get an event off the ground. So uh, this festival became the Southern Fried Festival. Um, this is the eighth year, so eight years ago. Uh, so it takes a few years um, to, to build the momentum and uh, I, I compare it to an airplane going down a runway. It's got to build up speed before it lifts off. So an event uh, builds that momentum and then when you reach that point of lift off, then it just begins to grow and grow from there. Uh, and that's where this festival has, has come. It's reached that point, um, more people come and they tell other people and there's more exposure for the event and then it just continues to grow. Well, the entertainment is the biggest draw. Uh, and this year, uh, we have great headliners. Friday night, uh, uh, the opening act is the Bad Dog Band um, and then uh, the Alabama Blues Brothers, which will really rock the square. Um, on Saturday night this year, we have the Graskels opening for Restless Heart. Uh, and if people will remember Restless Heart, uh, a, a country group. Uh, the Graskels are an up and coming bluegrass group. Uh, so uh, this year we've added uh, another stage. Uh, so we have three stages. We'll have a bluegrass stage, we'll have a west stage, and then the main stage. Uh, so the, the entertainment is the main uh, attraction. Uh, after that, uh, probably our cooking challenge that we have on Saturday morning. Uh, and then last year we started a new event, uh, the Man Cave. And we're hoping that event or that area grows this year uh, as an area for men, to, as something for them to do. And the Kids Zone is always a popular area. Well, uh, for the future, uh, I, I see the event growing and growing down North Main, uh, all the way down to the Riverwalk Park. Uh, now that uh, 6th Street and the Riverwalk are all finished in such a beautiful area, uh, it's a great expansion area for the event. I see more music stages uh, adding to the event in the future uh, and other attractions uh, as part of the event and it will just continue to grow. A new zoning code is being proposed by the City of Columbia. We spoke with Norman Wright, Director of Development Services for the City of Columbia, to talk about what form-based codes are and how they affect you in our segment, Civic Duty. Form-based codes are basically uh, 
zoning ordinance is like any other, but they focus on how things are built, the shape that they take, instead of how properties are used. So our code today is a use-based code. The code we're proposing is a form-based code. Instead of focusing so much on the uses of property, it focuses on how those properties are built. The big difference between use and form is use is everything like, say, a gas station that is commercial. A Walmart is commercial. Uh, your home is residential and an apartment complex is also residential. So uses are really about how the property is used but not how you and I experience them. The form of a property or the form of a development is how you judge the whole city. When people see our downtown, they don't see a collection of land uses. They see a, a lot of old architecture, a lot of buildings that are built in a style that's very unique to its time. Uh, they see the sidewalks, they see the quiet streets, so they see the form of things, the physical uh, attributes and those are very different from the use. So what's different between use and form? Use is something that we use to govern uh, development, but it doesn't really impact much on how people perceive development. Form is what you and I see every day from the way a building is built, to the way the parking lot is arranged, to the way in which one area of town is physically different from another. The changes that we're proposing in this new document are essentially changes that would allow for more flexibility for the way people want to use their property. Right now, there are people who want to have offices in their home. You know, maybe they want to do a tax service uh, for three months out of the year, and they live in an area or a neighborhood where it's not going to create a negative impact for people. Well, right now, our zoning ordinance doesn't allow you to do that. You can either be uh, a gas station or a quick mart or, or a full-fledged office building, or you can be a residence, but you can't be both. So there are real limitations here on how uh, people can use their property. How does this code affect the city of Columbia? It creates more flexibility for land uses, certainly, how people want to use their property but it also pays a lot more attention with how any new development fits in with its surroundings. Uh, right now we have development that sticks out like a sore thumb in a person's neighborhood. Uh, development that, uh, that along corridors doesn't fit the great quality of what their neighbors have done to either side. So we would focus instead on making sure that development fits the character of its area and then you can use it for a much broader arrangement of options so long as again you fit the character of the area. These codes need to be changed for I would say three reasons particularly. Now there are hundreds in our mind but the three that matter the most I think is number one uh, we don't show citizens, developers, anyone. We don't show them what we want as a city. So when you come to Columbia looking to develop property or even to do something in your own backyard, all we focus on is telling you what you can't do. And while that may seem pretty straightforward, the unfortunate thing is, is that often that leaves people guessing what they can do. Another important need for why this needs to be changed, this code, is uh, we, we've got to do better as far as making decisions. Right now we take three months to make a final decision on something that myself, the boards, and the council all know we're going to approve. So if we have cases, and we have many in a year, probably the majority of our cases, that we know for a fact we're going to approve, why take three months to get to that approval? And then the final reason I think that we really need to make this change is we need to emphasize ways in which our city can be better with every new development. The way in which its character can be improved, its, its safety, uh, the way in which growth can be a good thing in every single instance of new development. For those who want more information, the best thing that we can encourage is for them to call our office directly. Our number is 931-560-1560. They can speak to a staff person, get every question answered uh, uh, directly. Another thing that we would encourage people to do is they can go to our website. It's www.columbiatn.com. There's a copy of the code there on the front page so people can download that if they like. They can also stop by City Hall at any time. We can print them off a copy. 
Uh, again, we can answer questions in person, but that's the best way to find out more information. You can download a copy, you can call us, or you can visit our office directly. Either way, we're here from 7.30 to 4 o'clock, Monday through Friday, to answer every question. Pet Pals of Murray County is a nonprofit volunteer organization promoting the well-being of pets and assisting with the adoption of pets in our county. We are featuring Pet Pals in our segment, Collaborative Effort. Pals is an advocacy group. We're located here in Murray County, Tennessee. Uh, Pet Pals was originally formed as the Murray County Animal Shelter Association many years ago and their goal was to build a shelter in Murray County. Uh, once that goal was reached, we changed our name and we changed our focus. And now we are strictly oriented on helping pets in Murray County and their people. We have many projects that are community oriented, all revolving around keeping a healthy pet in a home where they belong. We're not really a part of the shelter, but because we are an advocacy group, we advocate for the shelter animals. We, um, we promote them at every opportunity. We encourage adoption. Um, we also link with the shelter, and we jokingly say our goal is to put the shelter out of business. Originally we wanted to build one, now we want to close it down. But what we would like to do is see every pet in Murray County spayed or neutered, fully vaccinated and kept at home where it's safe. That would eliminate strays from the shelter and we could turn our shelter into a place where people could go to learn, to learn more about pet care, to, to be educated, um, and, and maybe even one day open a clinic there for low-income persons to take their pets to. Wouldn't that be awesome? Pet Pals helps our community in a variety of ways. My personal favorite project is our Pet Food for Senior Citizens program. Uh, one day a volunteer from Meals on Wheels came to the office and said, we have a problem. He said before he left the home, seniors were sharing a portion of their food with their pets. And he said, isn't there something someone in this community can do? So Pet Pals started collecting food donations and monies to go towards seniors with pets who are in need. Um, often a pet owner uh, who is on a fixed income has to make a decision, do I pay my power bill or do I feed my pet? Do I buy my medication or do I feed my pet? And you can see that senior suffering. They, they don't want to lose their pet. Their pets are important to, to them, to their, to their physical and emotional well-being. And through food donations, through monetary donations, partnering with the Murray County Senior Center, it's become quite an outreach program of, of us providing food for seniors. Oh, there are a variety of ways the public can help Pet Pals by volunteering. We um, have a, a very active volunteer base and a volunteer program. Uh, one of the best ways to help and help shelter animals uh, is to become a Pet Pals volunteer and then volunteer at the shelter. When a dog walks well on a leash, he's more adoptable. If a cat or a kitten plays well and interacts with people, they're more adoptable. And that doesn't happen when they're sitting in the shelter with no interaction. That takes a volunteer who is just crazy about cats or dogs <laughs> going to the shelter and volunteering, playing with a pet, it's that simple. The public can find out more information about Pet Pals by liking us on Facebook. Or, if you're not a, a Facebook kind of person, you can give me a call. My cell phone number is 931-797-9191. I'll be happy to answer any questions.